Somebody asked about the deja vu experience and what that, how that might be related to dreams. You know, it's, it's not really known exactly what deja vu is. I mean, some people who have deja vu experiences with regularity are convinced that it's from a prior life or something. Well, we don't know how to prove or disprove that, but uh, maybe a more mundane explanation would be that you're remembering a dream, a, fr a dream fragment. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's happened to you occasionally that during the day, you hadn't remembered a dream from the night before, but something happens during the day. You see somebody, I dreamed about you last night, and it comes flooding back. Well, maybe deja vu is an experience when that happens, but it doesn't happen consciously. So that you're maybe dreaming something, maybe a common, ordinary event that's, uh, that was going to be repeated anyway. The other explanation that I've sometimes I've seen is um, that when you go into a new place, or in any kind of a new environment, you may not notice consciously all the details right away. Like you, you go into a room maybe for the first time and it's a, it's a convention or something and you're looking around for a familiar, pa familiar place and you're a little uneasy about you know, where am I going to find a chair and not be feel clumsy or awkward or whatever. So you, you finally find a place and you sit down and you look around. This place looks familiar. I've been here before. I've seen this before. Well, you did see it before, a couple of minutes ago when you were looking around the room. But you were so distracted by the social embarrassment or whatever that you didn't register the information of what the room looked like. And, but there it is. You know, so maybe those are a couple of possible explanations for deja vu. But it's, it's a very common experience, and most people find it a little eerie when it happens. You know, but it, it happens, it's a very common one. Um, tell you about a, a dream that um, the inventor of the modern sewing machine had, just to give you a, a sense of what I want to talk about. I'll talk a little bit about dream incubation and maybe teach you a little bit about maybe how you can, can uh, recall your dreams and use them to dream about a particular topic. Um, Elias Howe wasn't using dream incubation, but he was working very hard on the riddle of how to create a workable sewing machine. This was about 1845 and the cotton gin had been invented and other machinery to make fabric and but the bottleneck in creating garments and you know textiles was everything had to be sewn by hand. <coughs> so a lot of people were rushing to try to invent a, a working sewing machine and Elias Howe was a machinist and he was really working on this and he kept coming up with a prototype and it wouldn't work right, it would get jammed, it would have problems. And uh, he, he thought he was close to a breakthrough. He just had this sense that he was really getting, he was onto something, but he couldn't figure out exactly what, what he needed to do next. And he stayed up most of the night in his, in his, his machine shop. And about three in the morning, he fell asleep. And after he fell asleep, he had a nightmare. And the dream was that he was in Africa as a missionary. Now his cousin, was a missionary in Africa and his cousin had told him all kinds of stories, probably some of them true, maybe not, about cannibals and you know colorful kinds of things happening. Well anyway, Elias Howe dreamed that he was trying to escape from what he knew were cannibals chasing him down. He got caught, they tied him on a on a pole, tied his hands and his feet, you know, kind of like you'd carry a I don't know if you have a pig roast or something, but you know they carried him and they carried him off to the to the village and uh, they un dumped him into a, a cooking pot, a big cooking pot. He realized he was able to work his hands free, and he was trying to climb out. But as he was trying to climb out, there were a bunch of men who kept poking him back in by using these spears that they had to kind of bang on his hands and, and to push him back in there. And, and he, after a few minutes, he realized there was something peculiar about these spears. And what he finally noticed was that all of them had a knot hole near the pointed end of the spear. <laughs> and he woke up, still and kind of freaked out by the whole thing. And he was so tired, he didn't know if he wanted to wake up. And then it hit him. It hit him. He had been trying to invent a sewing machine. Everybody else was trying to invent a sewing machine. The same way you sew by hand, where the thread runs through the blunt end of the needle, and you pull the thread through. With a sewing machine, the only way it'll work effectively is if you put the thread in the pointed end, and the, and the thread is pushed through the fabric. And he tried it out. Within a few weeks, he had a working uh, prototype. 
And that was how the sewing machine was invented, through a dream. So dreams are not just kind of fanciful ways of trying to figure out what's going on in your unconscious mind, but can have really powerful um, practical application. Um, so, okay, can, can you have a dream about a particular topic? And uh, the answer is that there are some techniques for doing that, for trying to direct your dream mind. Not you're going to control your dreams, but you're going to try to see if you can direct your dreaming mind to dream about a particular issue. Um, then, of course, you've got to figure out what the dream that you get is saying to you, because the, the language of dreams is not the usual language of when you're awake. Dreams don't speak to you in words and sentences, and it's not a linear kind of thing that goes on. Dreams are symbolic. Dreams are metaphoric. Uh, in the case of, uh, of one, one uh, person that uh, reported a dream, she was trying to incubate a dream about whether or not her marriage should be brought to an end after many years of struggle, or whether it was time to move forward. And she had this dream in which she and her husband were leaving on a cruise. Everybody was waving goodbye. And at first, in her dreaming mind, she was already thinking, oh, this is a good sign. She was a little bit lucid. You know, this is a good sign. This could mean that something positive could be built out of this relationship yet. But then she looked up, and on the side of the ship, it said, Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> she woke up right away, and uh, I don't know if she went through a divorce or not, but. The dream certainly had a pretty powerful message, pretty powerful message, which is how dreams work. You know, the, um, the way of interpreting dreams is symbolic, typically. Um, certainly it makes sense to look at dreams as perhaps saying something about the real world, the concrete world. Dreams like, you know, does this dream maybe mean that I'm getting sick in a particular way? Maybe does this dream mean if I have a dream that my, um, my my grandson, you know, drives off a cliff somewhere. Maybe my sleeping mind has observed that he's reckless and not driving very sanely, or maybe, maybe drinks when he's driving. And so if you dream something, the first thing to look at is what is the dream telling me about the world? Maybe that's a place to start. Then secondly, what is the dream telling me about my psychological state of mind? You know, maybe the dream is helping me to to come to grips with my jealousies or my, uh, my fears or my anxieties in ways that I'm already conscious of, but maybe the dream can give me a new slant. And the third way to look at dreams is to look at the dream as coming from the unconscious mind and giving me new information and giving me insights that I might not, not otherwise have. So um, in the book, I talk about maybe looking at dreams in that way, looking first and what it might be telling me about the world, like the, the, the mother who dreamed about the lock being, uh, being loose, or, um, um, or the woman with the, with, the, with the breast tumor, and so on. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a layered thing. Working on a deeper level is a little more challenging uh, in terms of trying to figure out what's coming up. And the first thing, of course, you have to do if you want to work with dreams is to try to improve dream recall. Um, how many of you rarely or never recall dreams? A few people, yeah. Of course, we now know, since we know about REM sleep, that you dream every night. Everybody dreams every night. Um, we go through the cycles, and the issue is either that you're not waking up during REM sleep or that you have a habit of quickly going into daytime kinds of activities and thoughts. And they're in, in the book and on my website, which is talked about quite a bit in the book, there is advice for how to remember your dreams, how to maybe understand them, and uh, we'll talk maybe a, a little bit more about dream recall. And what I sort of would like to do is maybe give you a few, do a little self-hypnosis teaching in regard to um, improving dream recall. So um, maybe we'll do that. I think we're going to be Time's moving along, so we'll do that. But first thing I'd like to do, let's do this. I, I want to give you an idea of maybe one way of getting a handle on how hypnotizable you are. If you probably don't know, I mean, you may have an idea if you're creative and you're imaginative <laughs> and maybe you already go into these states on your own. There's a phenomenon called an idiomotor reaction. 
Now, idio refers to thinking and motor with movement. It's a phenomenon where when you think something, your body tends to move consistently with that thought. In fact, if this has been done, if you hook people up who are really strong fans of a particular sports to equipment that will monitor their muscle movement, if you're watching your favorite tennis player playing tennis, your body is actually making some movements. Not to actually may do this occasionally when you're watching tennis, but but you, you will actually move if you're thinking and concentrating on the movement of the player. There will be subtle movements in your body that will res that will be responding to the to the idea of the movement. So one of the one of the ways hypnosis is induced is through taking advantage of that. So if I'm saying things to you about your eyelids getting heavier, I'm talking eyelids getting heavier, your eyelids will move if you're, if you're responding and focusing. If I'm telling you that your arms are going to get heavier on the arms of the chair or they're going to get lighter and rise up, you know, those are idiomotor reactions. It's a, it's a good way to move hypnosis forward. It's usually not the crux of the matter, although sometimes practicing um, movement can be very helpful in, uh, in helping people with sports improvement through hypnosis and in sports psychology. But so idiomotor reactions are part of hypnotic uh, responsiveness. So what I'd like to do is maybe just give you a kind of a, an opportunity to respond and see how you react. So if everybody would stand up for a minute, we'll do a little group activity. And if you'd move such that you could put your arms out in front of you without poking anybody, kind of maybe turn to the side or whatever, just have enough room to do that. Okay. Put your arms straight out. Turn both hands with your palms up. Now turn your right hand with your thumb up. Leave your left hand the way it is. Your right hand with the thumb up. Now I'd like you to look at your hands. I know you're already pretty familiar with them, but uh, look at them as though you're taking a photograph. Because I'm going to have you close your eyes in a moment. I want you to have a vivid image of your hands in your mind as you close your eyes. Now close your eyes down. Now what I want you to, to do is imagine that on your left hand, the one with the palm up, I have just placed a large book, maybe an encyclopedia, a volume of an encyclopedia, a dictionary, a very large and heavy book, and you can feel the heaviness. You can feel your arm beginning to move down. You can begin to feel the heaviness. Your arm is getting tired. It's really kind of hard to hold it up. Your arm, left arm is getting very tired with the heaviness. On your right arm, on the thumb of your right hand, I've just tied a helium-filled balloon. And the, uh, I've tied that balloon. It's a large balloon, and you can feel it pulling your right arm up, 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 up. It's getting lighter and lighter, almost as though your arm has no weight whatsoever. You can feel it getting lighter, lighter and lighter. Now keep your arms where they are. Open your eyes and look at your own hands and look at the people around you, <laughs> and you'll see quite a difference. Okay, put your hands down. Have a seat. Some people were really moved a lot. If I were going to be doing, uh, how'd that feel? Do you feel, do you feel, do you feel it strongly? Yeah. If I were going to uh, pick somebody out for a hypnotic demonstration, I'd pick somebody whose arms were like one up and one down. <laughs> feeling piece of cake, you know. Somebody's got a good ability to focus and to have an idiomotor reaction. Now, if you did not have the reaction, uh, it doesn't mean you would not be a good hypnotic subject. It just means that this particular one didn't grab you. Uh, maybe it's the public setting. Maybe it's you know your, your resistance. Oh, and there are one or two people I noticed, and this typically happens, where the the heavy one is actually ends up higher than the, the other one. That's a good sign. That means you're a good hypnotic subject, but you're basically saying, "I'll be damned. I'm not doing this." You know, <laughs> and, and 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 you resist, and you actually overreact, and and this one ends up higher, and this one ends up lower. And uh, that's, a, that's somebody who's a little contrary, but we can work with that. Uh, and that that's going to be okay. Let's do one more, a little more dramatic maybe, but uh, you can try this one. Uh, intertwine your fingers together in, in front of you. Okay, you can rest your elbows on the arms of the chair. Really wrap the fingers around each other all the way in so that they're kind of nice and tight. Okay, focus your eyes down on your hands now. Just keep staring at your hands. Don't look up at me. But what I would like to tell you, this one can be a little disconcerting for some people because I'm going to have you have your hands stuck together. I'll tell you that from the beginning. 
And if that doesn't appeal to you, <laughs> if you feel you'd like to not have that happen, all you have to do any time to break the spell is to look up and look at me or look around the room. But if you really want to try this and check it out and see how you react in this hypnotic way, just focus your eyes on your hands. Focus your eyes on your hands and imagine that there's a beam of energy from your eyes down into your hands. And that beam of energy is beginning to tighten your grip. It's beginning to move your hands more and more closely together. And you can even see in your skin the circulation. Some parts of your knuckles are white, some parts are pink or red. And you can feel your hands getting more tightly stuck together. And as I count in a moment from one to five, your hands will become tighter and tighter. And if you want to continue this, just keep your eyes focused on your hands. The eye beam is getting even stronger now. It's tightening your hands tighter and tighter. Now, one, your hands are getting tighter. Two, tighter and tighter. Three, four, and five. Your hands are stuck together. You cannot get them apart. Try to pull your hands apart, but they will not come apart. As long as you keep your eyes on your hands, your hands will not come apart. In fact, if you try to pull on them, it's as though that will tighten them even more. Your hands are stuck together. You cannot get them apart. Really give it a try. They won't come apart. Give it a try. They won't come apart. They're stuck even tighter. Okay, now look up at me and just pull your hands gently apart. <laughs> there you go. I want to look around and make sure nobody's going to go through the evening with their hands stuck together. <laughs> How'd that feel? Interesting, huh? Weird. Yeah. Now, again, it's you and your imagination that did that. I just kind of gave you the information, you know, and I tried to be as firm and as convincing as possible that you could do this. But you do it. It's not a matter of me having power over you. It's a matter of you being able to. And if you, so if you responded to both of those very well, one hand was really high, the other low, and you really couldn't get your hands apart, you are probably a very good hypnotic subject. Uh, those for whom it didn't work doesn't mean you're not. It may mean it would take a little longer to get you into a good state. But uh, those of you who had a good reaction to both of those, you could probably hypno use hypnosis if you ever wanted to use it for pain control, not necessarily to have major surgery, but for pain control or in childbirth or for, for other kinds of things. So you might find a good hypnotist to work with you if you had some kind of a project uh, that you wanted to use that for. So, and again, those of you who didn't react, you may, uh, with a good hypnotist, be able to react just fine. You may be able to learn self-hypnosis just by reading my book and listening to some of my tapes. I still call them tapes because I'm old. Actually, they're <laughs> CDs, of course, or MP3 downloads. Is that what they're called now? Yeah. <laughs> dinosaur. Oh, dinosaur. Um, let's do a kind of group relaxation. Let me explain to you before we do it. I'm going to be talking relaxation, talking sleep. So get yourself comfortable. Maybe put both feet flat on the floor and, and sit up straight. Okay, see ya. And um, I'm going to take you into a quiet place. Some of you will, who are the good hypnotic subjects will go into hypnosis, but I'm not going to single anybody out and have any demonstration on an individual level. We won't do that tonight. But I'll, as a group, you'll respond by relaxing. And then I'm going to teach you a technique of how to give yourself a post-hypnotic suggestion for your own purposes. And it, it will, the phrase I'll be teaching you, since we're doing this for dream recall, among other things, the phrase I'll be using is, I welcome and remember my dreams. And I'll teach you how to say that phrase as you're dozing off to sleep at night in that hypnagogic state, actually, where you're very able to use your imagination and be susceptible to, to suggestions. I welcome and remember my dreams. Now, you can make up your own self-hypnotic um, phrase. If you wanted to just feel better, you might say, if you're having some anxiety, you might say something like, I'm feeling more relaxed and calm every day. Um, if you wanted to, um, to have more memory for a certain topic, you might say something my, like, my, uh, my memory and my recall are vivid and accessible. Or if you wanted to quit smoking, and here's the tricky part about that kind of thing. You don't ever want to say anything negative in your self-hypnosis self suggestions. If I were to hypnotize you and we were working together, I can say some negative things if I'm careful and that would work. But when you say things in a negative way, your unconscious mind tends not to hear the negative. 
So if you say, I no longer find cigarettes attractive, it's kind of like if I say, don't think of a pink elephant. What do you think of? Pink elephant comes right to mind. So if I say, or I, I say, well, I, I will not eat chocolate cake anymore. You know, chocolate cake is going to be the first thing you'll eat as soon as you wake up in the morning. So you have to say something like, I'm full and satisfied on the right kinds of foods. Or for smoking, it might be, I'm gaining more and more control over all my habits. So it always has to be positive. It has to be something, a phrase that's natural, that feels comfortable to you. So the one we'll use tonight, assuming you want to maybe remember more dreams, is I welcome and remember my dreams. Um, if you want to do some dream incubation, to dream about a particular topic, it could be something like, I welcome the wisdom of my dreams. But we'll do, I welcome and remember my dreams. So, okay, we're just going to talk relaxation, give you an idea of what it's like to be uh, the beginning phases of hypnosis, at least the way I do it. So we'll just close your eyes. Make sure you're comfortable and relaxed. And begin to focus your mind on the sound of my voice. As you focus on the sound of my voice, you begin to feel your body relaxing. You begin to feel your forehead and scalp letting go of any tension, any tightness. Your face relaxing. You may notice that there's some tension there that you didn't even realize was there. And as you relax, your cheeks and chin and jaw, just let them go. Let your mouth droop open if that's comfortable. Feel the area around your ears relaxing. Your neck and throat letting go and relaxing, your shoulders and back muscles releasing all tension and tightness, your chest and your abdominal area relaxing, your hips and pelvic area relaxing, focusing on the sound of my voice as I take you through the various muscles and nerves in your body and relaxing you. Feel your hips, pelvic area, thighs and knees letting go, relaxing. My voice, my voice is lulling you into a deeper level of relaxation. Your knees, lower legs, ankles, and feet, relaxing and letting go. Drifting on the sound of my voice now. Drifting down, 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 deeper and deeper into a state of peaceful relaxation. You'll remain comfortable in your chair. You won't fall out of your chair or get uncomfortable but you're relaxing more and more. I'll deepen you further in this state now by counting backwards from 20 down to zero. As I count, I want you to count silently along with me. Don't count aloud. Don't even move your lips. Just think each number as I say it. You might visualize the numbers as well as though they were illuminated passing before your eyes. The colors may be different from one number to another, Maybe the first number will be a pale blue, and then the next one will be a little darker and a little darker, and then maybe changing to a different color. But as I count from 20 down to zero, and you visualize them and hear the sound of my voice and count silently along with me, you'll drift deeper into a state of relaxation and peace with each passing number. Counting silently along with me now, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero, all the way down into a quiet state of peace, relaxation, and even the level of hypnosis. Drifting on the sound of my voice now, I'll teach you how to use a phrase. In in this case, we'll be using the phrase to encourage dream recall. The phrase, again, is, I welcome and remember my dreams. 
So in order to give yourself this post-hypnotic suggestion, I want you to repeat that phrase 20 times just before you go to sleep at night. <coughs> so after you get into bed, you turn over maybe into your most comfortable position, the position you normally go to sleep in. When you're ready to go to sleep, you simply repeat the phrase 20 times now. I'll explain to you exactly how you'll do it. In order to keep track of how many times you've said the phrase, so you can do it 20 times, and in order to push it more deeply into your unconscious mind, I want you to press down with each finger on each hand in turn, going through each hand twice for the total of 20 times. So you'd start with the thumb on your left hand, and you'd press and say the phrase. And we'll go through that in a moment. As you repeat the phrase with me, I'll be saying it aloud. Don't you say it aloud. Don't even move your lips. Just think the words as I say them, as though your thinking and my saying are becoming blended together in your mind, my voice entering your mind and combining with your thoughts as you think the phrase. And as you press with your fingers, don't exert too much energy there either. Just move each finger ever so slightly, just enough movement to keep track of where you are in the sequence. So follow along with me now, starting with the thumb in your left hand, press and think, I welcome and remember my dreams. First finger, I welcome and remember my dreams. Middle finger, I welcome and remember my dreams. Ring finger, I welcome and remember my dreams. I welcome and remember my dreams. And over to the other hand, I welcome and remember my dreams. 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 And back to the first hand again. I welcome and remember my dreams. 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 And that's all there is to it. Continue to sit and relax with your eyes closed. And the words will drift through your mind even as you sleep. You may doze off to sleep more quickly than usual. In fact, this may be a very good technique if you do have trouble dozing off to sleep, whether you use this phrase or some other project you're working on. Focus on the words. Focus on doing the technique. And you may find that you drift off to sleep while you're still doing it. That's perfectly all right. The words will continue to drift through your mind even as you sleep. If you're still awake after you've gone through your hands twice, you may want to go ahead and start over again. Do it a second time. You can certainly do it two, three, four times or not, as much or as little as you choose. And you'll find that the technique will begin to encourage dream recall. Of course, you need to do other things to improve dream recall as well. Those are talked about in the book, but they basically include keeping a dream journal, waking up and writing down whatever's come to mind, and a few other tips that are important. But this phrase can go a long way because it's the last thing you're doing in your mind, and it's repetitive. And it's taking place in that quiet, hypnagogic place so that it will encourage dream recall naturally as you doze off to sleep. Just keep your eyes closed for a minute more. I'm going to bring you out of this state of quiet relaxation. You may be in a kind of meditative state, or you may, some of you may have drifted into relatively deep hypnosis. So I'm going to do a procedure to bring you out of hypnosis. For the rest of you, it'll just be a signal for you to open your eyes and attend to 
the outer world once again. So relax for a minute more. You may imagine for a moment that you're in a very peaceful place, a beautiful place, maybe a favorite scene or a view. There have been some beautiful, beautiful sights lately here. You may picture one of those for a moment and just soak that up and enjoy it. Sit with that for a minute and let yourself relax and appreciate and be nourished by that view, by the experience of being in that peaceful place. Relax there for a minute. And now we'll begin the process of bringing you out of this state. Just keep your eyes closed until I get to the number five. I'll begin to count. And as I count, you'll feel your arms and hands, legs and feet becoming lighter. Your body becoming a little less deeply relaxed, but continue to relax. Your attention will focus from the inside to the outside. As I count from one to five, you'll wake up wide awake, refreshed and alert, feeling very, very good on the count of five now. One, two, three, four, and five. Wide awake. Just open your eyes. Okay. I don't think we want to do anything else after that. And hope the rest of the evening is pleasant for you. You may find yourself more relaxed than usual, but you'll be able to drive fine. Everything will be, you know. In fact, in some ways, you may be even more kind of focused on what you need to do than you usually are. Anybody have any last minute questions before we call it a night? One, oh, go ahead. That's you. I'm wondering about things about um, past family members when you haven't ever met them or you know haven't seen them in a long, long time, and how that the memory of them can be conjured up so clearly. Yeah, it's vivid. Why don't you and I talk afterward for a few minutes? <coughs> That's okay. So I think everybody's kind of. I think we're ready to call it a night. Or if anybody wants to come tomorrow morning, we can talk more about dreams and specific things. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it.